In this tutorial we will create the detailed drawing for the nose gear fork. The first thing to do is to change the page layout of the sheet to set the correct standards to be used. Secondly, we will change the primary scale of the drawing. In the View Layout toolbar, click the Page Layout command. In the dialog box, ensure that the standard is set to ISO TU Delft. In the warning pop-up, click OK. Next change the sheet style to A2 ISO to ensure the correct page size is used and then click OK. Now we will change the primary scale of the drawing. Right click on sheet 1 in the model tree and select properties. Under the sheet tab, change the scale to 1 to 2. Now double check that the properties match. The page should be A2 ISO and the projection method should be third angle. Click OK to set the new properties. In this step we will use the view wizard to create the different views of the part. In the view layout toolbar, click the arrow on the right hand side of the toolbar to extend it and show some extra commands. Click the wizard command. In the wizard dialog box, click the fifth configuration option on the left side. Then click the Next button. We will remove the right and bottom views as they are not needed, since they do not provide any extra information. This is done by right-clicking the view and selecting Delete. Now, click the Finish button. Note this does not end the command and we will now need to switch to the Part Design tab containing our part, to select the orientation we want to use. For the isometric view to have the correct orientation we need to rotate the geometry. Under the view toolbar, change the view to ISO to position the model. Now select the YZ plane in the model tree as the plane to be used for the front view. Check that the orientation of each view is correct. By using the view orientation manipulator, we can rotate the views if they are not oriented correctly. To generate the views, click in an empty space on the page. In the next step we will position the views correctly. In this step we will reposition and edit the views so that they are correctly displayed. First, we will add the axis and center lines to the views. Multi-select the front, left and top views by holding the control key and selecting the outer frames of each view. Right-click on one of the selected frames and select the Properties option. In the Generation tab, under Dress Up, click the check marks for the axis and center line options. Click OK to update the views with the center lines. We will now change the scale of the isometric view. Right-click the isometric view and select Properties. In the View tab, change the scale to 1 to 4. Finally, we will position the views correctly. This is done by clicking and dragging the frames of the views around the page. Note that the top and left views are positioned relative to the front view. Position the front, top and left views so they fit on the page. When moving the isometric view you will see that it moves along the 45 degree diagonal. In order to position it correctly, right click on its frame. Under the view positioning, choose position independently of reference view. You will now be able to freely move it. Position it in the top right corner of the page. In this step we will add a breakout view to be able to see the hole for the axle in the front view. To start, make sure the front view is the active view. For demonstration purposes, the left view is currently active. This is shown by its frame being red and not blue like the other views. To activate the front view, just double-click its frame. In the View Layout toolbar, select the Breakout View command found underneath the Broken View command. Draw a rectangle around the lower part of the fork that encompasses the axle hole. Do not worry if the sides are not completely vertical. Once you close the rectangle the breakout window will appear. Set the X parameter to 0 mm to cut the view in the center. Press OK to create the cut. As you can see the front view is now sectioned where the cut is. If you need to adjust the cutout afterwards, 
double-click the breakout in the model tree and edit the sketch. Once you are finished editing, click in an empty space to confirm. Click OK to update the view. Every drawing needs a frame and title block to show the information of the part. So, in this step we will add one to the drawing. In the View Layout toolbar, click the Page Layout command to open the layout window again. Under Dress Up Options, select Drawing Title Block TU Delft in the drop-down menu as the template to use for the title block. Under Frame and Title Block, click the Create option. Press the Apply button to generate the lines and text for the frame. In the pop-up box, type your name into the text field, then click OK. This adds your name to the drawn by field. Click OK to close the page layout window. To edit items in the frame, we need to right-click on Sheet 1 in the model tree and select Edit Background. We will add the weight attribute that was computed when we created the part. Double-click the weight item in the frame to enter editing mode. Now right-click it and select Insert Attribute Link. Navigate to the Part window and select the top of the model tree. In the Attribute window, double-click the computed weight attribute to insert it. Then click OK in the text editor to confirm the change. Return to the sheet using the Working Views command in the toolbar. Sometimes there are center lines that are not automatically generated for items, such as radii, which are less than 180 degrees. In this step we generate some of them, and then position them correctly in order to be able to dimension them. In the Annotation toolbar, click the Center Line command. Select the outer radius of the fork and Katia will generate its center lines. Repeat steps 1 and 2 for the inner radius as well. As you can see the center lines are overlapping and thus, we need to adjust their lengths by dragging the ends of the center lines. Note how all the sides change by the same amount. By holding the control key, we can change the lengths of each side individually. Adjust the center lines so they are not overlapping each other and reduce the length of some of the sides to fit the view. In the top and left views, extend the center lines along the symmetry planes to show that the part is symmetrical. In this step we will add dimensions to the drawing. We will use the lessons learned in the Common Conventions handout to correctly dimension the part. Before we start to dimension the drawing though, we will update the views so that all the information in the views is correct. Click the Update Current Sheet button to run the command. Note that if it is grayed out then the sheet is already updated. This command can be used anytime there is a change to the geometry. Now, in the Annotation Toolbar, under the Dimensions command there are several commands we will be using during this step. First, we will use the Stack Dimensions command to dimension the vertical dimensions in the front view. For all the different dimension commands there is a tools palette that allows you to change what direction the dimension is created. If you are having trouble creating a certain dimension, try changing the method used. For now, we will use the second option. Start by selecting the axis of the hole for the axle, next select the first center line. Right-click and make sure that half dimension is unchecked so that the correct length is used. Now continue the stack by selecting the horizontal items in succession. Complete the stack by moving to the left and placing the dimensions in a convenient location. Repeat the same process for the horizontal dimensions. If the name of the frame is intersecting the dimensions, click and drag them to a clear location outside of the projection lines. Next use the Dimensions command to create the radii, diameter, and draft angle dimensions in the front, left, and top views. 
Remember that double-clicking the command will keep it active and allow you to create all of them in succession. When creating different kinds of dimensions, right-clicking will give you more options to change the type of dimension to be created. Experiment with different options to see what types of dimensions can be made. Next use the dimensions command to create the three fillet radii. Finally use the chamfer dimensions command to create the chamfer dimension. Select the lower side of the chamfered edge to make the dimension show in the horizontal direction. In the tools palette make sure to choose length times angle and two symbols. Use the drawing provided on the dashboard to ensure that all your dimensions are correct. In this step we will add a tolerance, surface texture, adjust the accuracy of dimensions and change some values to reference dimensions. Add a tolerance to the diameter 20 hole for the axle by right-clicking on the dimension and selecting properties. Under the tolerance tab, Change the main value to Tolnum 2, the upper value to 0 mm, and the lower value to minus 0.1 mm. We use an upper value of 0 mm because the axle will have a press fit into the fork so if the hole is too big, the fit will be too loose. Next, we will add a surface texture to the hole to specify the finish that we require. In the annotation toolbar select the surface texture command. Now, select the lower line of the axle hole. In the dialog box change the left value to 0.05 and the symbol to the closed triangle to show that the surface must be machined. In the second drop-down remove the upper line, as we are not specifying the production method. Click OK and then reposition the surface texture symbol. Next, we will change the accuracy of the R40 in the top view to remove the decimal places as the precision given is not necessary. In the Tools toolbar, select the Object Properties command. Now select the R40 dimension, and under the Numerical options change the value to 1. High precision values will typically increase the cost of production as more advanced manufacturing techniques will be needed, so it is good practice to adjust the precision of dimensions to fit the need of the part being manufactured. Finally, we will change the 130mm and 150mm dimensions to reference values as they would be counted as redundant, due to the radii and other vertical dimensions given. Highlight both dimensions, then right-click on one of them and select Properties. Under the Dimension Texts tab, add parentheses in the text boxes on each side of the main value. Click OK to add the changes.